Today I'm going to show you how I've made the cover for this double pamphlet book, little watercolor sketchbook that I've been working on over the summer and into the fall. Uh, this is a non-adhesive binding that works really well for a double pamphlet book. It's hardcover and it has two flaps of paper that go around each board and fit into each other in a tension fit and then a spine that comes into the back. It's all paper. So for one of these covers, I've got two strips of paper in the grain direction on each of these strips going this direction. And I've got a board as well. We're aiming for something that looks like this, where you have the paper wrapped around the board in two different directions. This is a cover weight paper called Reeves BFK, I'm using the gray. And then I've got two boards that are this size. Grain direction is going this way. I've marked that with pencil. I'm going to start by lining up the board on one of these widths of paper. And this is going to be folding over like that. And like this, I'm gonna have stuff to cut off. So I'm gonna start by looking at one edge and simply marking three and a quarter inches in. That's about half of the width of my board. Have three and a quarter. Line up the board there. I'm gonna turn this around, easier to see. Lining up my board on those two marks and then taking my bone folder and scoring a, a good sharp line that I can then crease over really tight over the edge of the board. I'm then going to turn the board with the paper, making sure that that crease remains tight. The board is snug in there. These two edges are lined up on the paper and then I'll score this again here on this side. I can show you that I've shaped my bone folder to have a pretty sharp point. I have a video about doing that as well. You can check it out. Most bone folders come with a pretty blunt point. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Crease that over along that score line. I've got this line here where there will be a seam. I'm gonna take my tear bar. You can do this a number of ways. You could mark it. I'm just gonna take a tear bar until it comes to that. You can see the seam there. You can kind of feel it right there. I'll just tear that off. Take the bone folder and smooth that burr from the terra bar, just like that. Now we're gonna take this other strip of paper and we're gonna do the same thing. Going the other direction, you can see that the, the board width lines up with the width of the paper, whereas before it was the height that was lining up, and even though this almost looks like a square, it's not quite. So I'm gonna mark oh, about three and a quarter, maybe it was close to three and five sixteenths on this one. Basically half of the height of the board. You see that the edges of the board are lining up with the edges of the paper. Score, align, hold the paper over tight, and turn it around. Score the line on the other side, hold the paper over tight. So if you can't see the seam very well, you could mark it here, here, and you could then cut it if you wanted to. I like this terra bar. I think that's the easier way to go. And we'll smooth out that cut right there so the seam just lines up. This next part can be kind of tricky. You need to wrap these two together. We have the seam on one side, line up the sheet to cover that seam, and then we're going to tuck one side in to this gap right here. I'm going to try to do this without damaging the paper at all. Oh, I do have one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to round these corners off. It'll make it a lot easier to tuck all of that in. I'm just taking scissors and rounding these off here as well. If you really wanted to be fancy with that, you could, but in the end, it's all gonna be hidden. I suppose if you had a thinner paper, that would really make a difference. I'm just gonna tuck in just like that. And then this gets tricky. I'm gonna have to just slightly bend the paper as it going in there. And just be very patient. Patient and just kind of work it in. Don't lose patience. Just kind of working with my thumbs and forefingers. Kind of roll that into the gap. As far as it'll go. Alright, it's fitting pretty tight. Just a tension, tension fit in all those corners. So I've got both of the covers now like this and I've got a scrap piece that I tore off from one of those sheets 
and I'm going to use this as a spine piece. It's going to tuck in here and here, just as before. I'm going to cut off the corners so that it tucks in easier. And I need to know basically how thick this spine is going to be. My book is rather thin. It's just two signatures put together. So I figure that's about a quarter of an inch. I want to find the middle of this. And that's a nine inch measurement there. And I know the middle of nine is four and one half. I could easily split that on either side of four and a half by a sixteenth of an inch or just a little bit more. We're just finding the middle and then splitting the thickness of the book on either side of the middle there. I'm going to score these two lines. They're fairly close together for this book. But like I said, it's a pretty thin book, just being two signatures. Scoring the lines helps us to pre-fold there. And also, always really hard to fold two score lines close together. You want to be careful not to damage the paper, so just be very patient. Increase that with the bone folder. And then that's going to fit in like this. To sometimes just shimmy it in there. If you've done it right, it's not going to be particularly easy because it's not going to be loose. It may take some patience. You're not going to want to take this apart once you've put it together. Working really close to the seam here, this being the seam. You can do one little shimmy at a time. the same thing. I've decorated the front cover with a little title piece and I've also got the book. So I'm going to insert the very back page, which should be blank, into the same space that I inserted the spine. I'm going to be very patient. Pull this into that same spot and work it in. And this paper is a text weight paper, so it's a little bit thinner than the cover weight paper I had used for the spine. I may not want to go in quite as easily. Careful, kind of shimmy it in there. There we go. Okay, so the back cover is on. We're looking now at the front. This is the top. We have a blank page and the spine to insert into the cover page. We want to make sure we're putting that on the right way. That's right side up. I'm just going to open that up. Try to put them in simultaneously. There we go. Now that went in lots easier. Compared to the other side, it's a little bit looser on the front cover. I made the back cover a little bit tight. And that's the book. Let's see what it looks like on the spine there. And then there's the head and the foredge, cover, and the tail. And it opens up pretty easily. Watercolor of the enchantments in Washington State. I made while visiting my brother there in May. I don't know the name of the peak, I've looked and I can't find it, but it's right above Eight Mile Lake. It was really cold. And then this is Main Street in uh, Leavenworth, Washington. It's been a long time since I've done watercolors. This didn't turn out so great, but I didn't mind it too much. And then later on in June, the beginning part of June of 2021, I went camping with my boys at a lake here in Texas that's a power plant. Not long after that, our family took a vacation in Colorado, stayed at a friend's house up in the mountains in Conifer. And it was really windy. I learned that it's not good to do watercolors in the windy, cold. I don't know, it's kind of growing on me, but I'm not real happy about it. We went over to Utah. This is the temple that Michelle and I were married in, the Mount Timpanogos Utah Temple. On our way back from Utah, we stopped again in Colorado at a reservoir. Can't remember the name of it. Let's see, it's not far from 
Black County, another Gunnison. Oh, I didn't like that one very much, so I did another that same morning of this uh, handicap sign in front of the reservoir right there. I liked that one a lot better. Later that summer, we decided to rent an RV travel trailer and we pulled it out to Ratcliffe Lake here near where we live. Our son stayed in that tent. The rest of us stayed in that trailer. I've always been interested in these mounds of dirt that people use either for big gardening projects or construction. This one was on the so near the soccer field at Stephen F. Austin, where I work. And uh, other types of infrastructure. This is Pecan Park, little culvert for the drain there that drains into Lanana Creek. My wife and I went camping again. This time this was at uh, Lake Nakanich. This is my favorite piece, although there's some mistakes about it, but I just call it tree. I like how the reflection on this window looks like the trunks and the branches of the tree that's behind that building. And finally, a real tree. Just to end off the season, we had a wonderful fall with all the leaves. And so this is a pecan tree in Pecan Park near my house. And those are the watercolors, 13 of them. Thanks for watching.